Hey, what's up, guys? Today we're coaching a Jace and Kane player. So they actually just ended up, you know, showing me a Jace game, even though there's some other champs that we ended up deciding on, like them playing instead, um, based on what they told me and everything. But if you guys are interested in coaching from a rank five sovereign player, it's just fifteen dollars an hour for coaching. So you know, DM me on Discord, Talon one one six nine, or through the link in the description if you're interested in that. And uh, yeah, let's just get right into this video. Yeah, I usually play like both play styles. Uh, okay. I wanted to play tank this game uh, i played with a good friend of mine which is uh, the top laner he's paragon he played like pro in the pro league the early stages of wild red gotcha. so um he's like the decent player here but yeah that's the thing i wanted to point out so let's let's go yeah so even the first thing you should immediately uh, go to the top side and instead of wording like that um so your champion's really good at all ending people level one and so, if you go to the top side, you word their raptors. Do you know what raptors are? Yeah. Yeah, so if you go word their raptors, you get a lot more understanding of where their jungler is pathing. And then it also creates an opportunity for if the Lissandra shows up there for you to just jump on her and all in her right away. Because if you all in someone level one, most mages especially, including Lissandra, then you're just going to win. So that would be the better thing. Another thing here, you could have walked up and auto attacked before you um, switched to melee form and jumped on her, just for like a bit of extra damage. Uh -huh. And then generally as well, when we're playing into mages in the mid lane as Jace, it's better to push the first wave really, really quickly if we don't have a good all-in opportunity, so that the wave will go under the tower immediately. And then you'll just first ability, third ability, once the entire wave is cleared and you get free poke on them, and then you also have the lane priority. Does that make sense? Yeah, that... that that surely makes sense. So you mean like by like quickly um, touching, you know, it is, is it like the first ability of the cannon form and the hammer yeah. form? So if you want to pause real quick, I can just explain a little bit about the early game because there's a couple different ways to play based on matchup and everything. So for example, when we're into a melee matchup as Jace, generally speaking, we want their minion to be, you want one additional auto on their minion compared to the amount on your minion. So basically their minions are very slightly lower than yours. That way you can get a last hit off and they still have to hit, they have to auto attack the minion twice to kill it. What this does is it means then now that you kill this one minion, you have some time while the enemy is about to go up to last hit their minion, like, or to last hit your minion to just pressure them and auto attack them. So basically in the melee matchups, you just want it to always be in a position where every time that they walk up for a last hit, you can auto attack them. And then if they go up more or if it's you know possible, then you'll use your first ability and third ability in your range form. And then you'll jump on them afterwards and you know, you'll make that whole trade with them. Um, whereas when we're into range matchups, like Safer, Mages, Lissandra, Oriana, Syndra, you usually want to push the wave level one really fast. Again, because of the fact that then you get level 2 first, because you usually get level 2 off the uh, fourth minion of the first minion wave. And then you get that level 2, you get that poke on them with your first and third ability in range form. Because you're not really going to be able to bully them as hard. Um, and then the only time that you're like into those melee champs you're going to trade level 1 is again, 1 if you find that all in when you're warding the raptors. And then 2 if they ever just walk up too far. Or if like you're about to get level 2 and then you know they're still level 1, you go on them in like those scenarios. Does that make sense? Yeah, that, that that makes complete sense. Cool, cool. Um, you know, it's 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 easier to to see my mistakes here, but you pointing out the you know, specific things that I need to do, it's yeah, it's good. good. You can start. I, I'm taking notes, well. by the way. Cool. Okay, I do typically write notes at the end, um, but if you want to just take notes throughout, you can also do that, and then you can share with me the notes, um, and then I can like see if we need to write anything else additional down. Either of those things works. Yeah. Um, so another thing here, it'd be important to just use, okay, now you use it, and then once we spot the enemy jungle, so we don't, again, if you want to pause, I need to explain some wave measurement, so I'm just, I'll just ask you to pause throughout, okay. um, if, and then just go over to the Lissandra, look at the wave here. Um, you don't actually need to click on Lissandra, just look at the wave is what's important. And so here, this entire wave, you have more minions than them, which means that if you just recall like this, all of these minions are going to die. So you're going to lose all of this gold, this entire wave pretty much when you recall. And you're not in enough yeah, danger. I will lose or... the yeah, what's up? Yeah, I, I just wanted to, to ask, uh, this is a whole lot of experience and gold I'm going to lose. Uh, yeah, exactly. But, you know, I, I, my train of thought, it's obviously not as advanced as someone that plays like you. You know, it's but good my to, train for you to explain. Thought, being a, yeah, being a, a newbie, you know, I see the scuttle being contested, so I, I go to the river and 
try and secure a kill on the enemy jungler, so my yeah. uh, jungler can have a tempo advantage or a level advantage, you know. Uh, yeah. You know, so so I'm kind of like sacrificing one for the other one. I know that it's better to, you know, push the wave and then go help a jungler, but yeah. as I know, it's going to be a pantheon. Just, you don't want to, to risk it, you know? Yeah, so there's a lot of things that go into how we decide on whether we're actually going to go help at the scuttle immediately versus pushing the wave first. So if you look on your map, you can see your top lane, like your dual lane, they're super low, they're pushed under their turret. That means that the enemy dual lane are going to rotate first. So if you go there, the enemy dual lane, assuming they're not awful at the game, will come, which is already the, not not the bot lane, the, the top lane, like the, the dual lane. So like, you can see this, right? You see your teammates are very low, they're pushed under your tower. The enemy dual lane are much higher health than Morgana as well as higher health. Alongside that, Again, you're going to lose 200 gold. So in terms of the math of it, say that you do kill Pantheon. That's 300 gold, right? But you're going to be sharing it with your team. But it's going to be roughly like 300 gold worth for the kill. If you get the wave, it's a guaranteed 200 gold, which is, you know, no matter what, you're getting that 200 gold. And then after you push the wave, you can still go that get that possible 300 gold after because you're going to push the wave really quickly. Like your champion can clear it pretty quickly. So instead, you, we'd rather mm -hmm. take the guaranteed gold rather than the risky gold. Alongside that, again, we're scared of the top lane coming, whereas our dual lane is too low to come. And Pantheon is way stronger early game than Fiddlesticks, so we should also be very scared about actually fighting a Fiddlesticks. So you should just ping your teammate to retreat, and then push the wave, and if your teammate's still there after that, then you can go help. Because you're also low health, so you're going to be really at risk of dying as well here. Does all of that make sense? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think cool. it definitely does. I mean, uh, second ability from Pantheon and the uh, first one should KO me right away. We'll see what actually happens though. Maybe the enemy play it poorly and it works out. So looks like the Pantheon does play it poorly and it works out. So you know we'll take it. If it if it works, it works. But again, it's always about making kind of like the guaranteed plays that are going to work consistently because you know plays like this, which rely only on our opponents kind of making mistakes, are usually not as you know consistent which in the long run leads to, to less overall wins and like it might lead to you know an individual game working out like this one but in the long run it's kind of yeah it's just not as consistent basically right it's like coin flipping between my yeah. jungler being good and enemy jungler being bad and uh, a whole wave of minions that is just going to advance and they can farm yeah. safe got it and again here our focus should just be clearing the wave not trading so much because we're not in like a great spot to actually kill the sandra we're not super high like uh, gold here we haven't been doing like amazing in lane in terms of like killing them so we should be a lot more just like uh focus on pushing the wave and then roaming or, or making plays afterwards rather than like because because another thing about when you trade when a wave is there one you're taking damage from the wave as you trade and two you're making yourself very gankable for longer you kind of want to minimize the amount of time that you're like you know in that type of position trading aggressively in a wave and you'd rather only trade when you know it's like really favorable for you and again you'd also rather be looking for like more realms here stuff like that yeah so i noticed that this game i get ganked a lot i think i die here yeah so this way this death is actually not that bad also if you want to uh if you hit the top right the three little bars in the top right and then hit the fog of war, make it blue. Hit the the blue eye and the Diablo de Kira. Yeah, that one. So both of them? Oh, no. no, just yes, just that one. I mean, either both work too. This is good, but um, it makes it so now we don't see their vision. You would only see what you would see in the game now. But your death there is not that bad, and the reason it's not that bad is because you already had been pushing the wave. So even if you die, they can't. Push I don't lose girl from the wave. What? I don't lose the goal of yeah, the minions exactly. dying today. So yeah, that's why like it's not as bad of a death. And you didn't spend a lot of time there. You were just on the wave and clearing it. And then like sure, Pantheon comes and ganks you, you die. They lose a lot of like uh, spells there. They, they lose ults and, and ignite and whatever. I don't mind that. You know, that's not that's not the type of thing we're looking at. Like we're not always just looking at whether or not we die. In situations like that, it's, it's not a big deal to die. Right. Uh, I've always wanted to ask some, you know, pro players if... Um... You know, uh, I've heard a lot of arguing about, like, rushing your first item versus rushing your boots. Um, yeah. 
is it is it dependent on the champion you're playing or something like that it's definitely dependent on champion but most solo laners are gonna go boots first and the reason they're gonna go boots first is because the power spike is just like uh so good for lane phase and you can get it so quickly because after i think it's like four waves three waves you have 900 gold and then you like 900 additional gold so 1400 total and you can use that back to just get your boots already and then on that power spike like you're insanely strong whereas if you're waiting for a full item you're not going to get that power spike until around first dragon which is just way later and obviously getting that earlier power spike especially as an early game champion like jace and most laners means that you're going to then double that lead further because you're stronger earlier on in the game heart steel is one of those few examples where sometimes it's justifiable to get it early because it's stacking item right obviously but in my opinion you should still be getting your boots first especially on jace because he's really focused on the lane phase and then here, when we see this, I made a lot of mistakes. Yeah. I, I made a lot of mistakes in this game, so that's a thing that yeah. I wanted to show you. Like, like because I think this is the most um, dead side I've gotten in a while, and yeah. also I like lose relevance like from the seven minute onward. The yeah. Rest of the game, and, and, and a large yeah. reason is because of our lack of focus on the waves. Because once again, that's what I wanted to point out here is that you shouldn't have even roamed here. It was three people. Your teammates were basically already dead. You should push the wave and then roam again, because now we're losing that gold in the wave. And so you got 400 gold, but you also died. So you only got a net positive of 100 gold. You easily would have gotten way more than a net positive of 100 gold, because you would have got this wave, which it was like, it's like two waves. It's like 400 gold in this, just this wave. And then that wave would have crashed under the tower, denied the enemy like three, 400 gold. So you would have got like a net six, seven, 800 gold from pushing that wave. And instead we do get it so we can see like in the end you know the net is not quite as, as severe but we still didn't deny the enemy the gold that we could have and even then you just gave up more gold there just to come slightly earlier so i really think so far like the main problem i'm seeing is just that you are really over concerned with fighting and you kind of like i get this feeling that you're kind of like anxious that your team is going to die if you don't get there as soon as possible and that you're like really just concerned with you know always being there and so your teammates don't get mad at you or whatever it's just like it's taking about five or ten extra seconds to just get that wave pushed and then make the same play that we're going to make anyways and every once in a while you do have to give up the wave to just go because it's like really really urgent but that's you know going to require your own intuition to determine when that should be and right now you're kind of going too many times when you could be getting the wave first right uh you want me to speed up the replay uh it's fine like this unless you're like short on time and you want to go quickly i'm fine with how it is I don't know, it's just so we we get enough time to review, you know, the, yeah, both, we'll both, both of the games. games. I did, like, I, it's uh, 15 for an hour, but it's like, if it goes over an hour, I'm not going to charge you more. I just, I'm fine with going over. Unless you, again, if you need to speed it up, that's fine. Just let me know as well, and that's cool. Yeah, don't worry, man. Just let me know if you need a sub. I can give a sub to you. No, 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 you don't need, again, yeah. I, I don't, like, I like coaching. I do it because I like it, so I don't mind it going over a little bit. Just like, you know. No, I would I really much like for you to coach um, one of my my friends, which is a uh, Paragon, the, the, the one who's, who's in top one. Gotcha. It's a challenger jungler. I I get. I want to see the both mentalities of LAS and NA clash. <laughs> it should be interesting. Um. So yeah, uh, I keep repeating the same mistakes. I I think. Yeah. Of, again, um, we kind of went towards mid. At this point, I would have liked to try to play towards side lane now. Like, with this build especially, it's kind of nice to be on side lanes a lot more. So, obviously, you have to hope that your dual lane actually go to mid. And so, you should, like, ping it a lot. And then try to go uh, top side and just be on the side lane. Rather than... Yeah, I, 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 was, I was thinking at this point, you know, that Tristana and Lulu are doing this thing. Uh, my solo laner, which is my top laner, is doing really good. Uh, I don't want to disturb, you know, the, the gold income of the Tristana and the Lulu. Um, and also my Darius is going good. Uh, Philosticks has to start um, farming, you know, keep farming, so I get a little lost here in, in what to do depending yeah. on the situation. I, I think this is the right, right-ish call to keep yeah, pushing right me. Yeah, right now but... going mid here is correct. Like that's that's the correct play. And then after we, we do this, we should again be looking for side lanes. So now your teammates came here, this is the perfect opportunity to now go top side. We should be looking to go rather than because now you're sharing the gold with everyone in mid lane when we could just go get that top wave and we're happy to be on the side lane anyways as jace in the mid game um whereas now I, gonna... I, I was thinking 
Yeah, I was thinking like I, I'll, I'll have to I'll have to stand and, and lose the seat. You know, I don't want them yeah, yeah. to get get and I get the yeah, interest on a Just like you mentioned, safe, and even if they do die, it's not a big deal. Additionally, they both have flashes up and ultimates, so it's like it's basically impossible that they die with everything that they have up. And there's no objective up, so even if they do die, it's not risky. You just need to be more selfish. Yeah. Again, like it's. This is the main thing. You need to be a lot more selfish if you're gonna play Jace. Like, if you want to be really unselfish, play Galio. You know, play Wayne. Play like a roaming mid. You know, who's like tankier and whatever. Don't play Jace if you're. I wanna... usually play those kind. I usually yeah. play those kinds of champions. Uh, kind of most of my time. Most of the time, I. Uh, I climbed a lot with uh, Shen. Yeah. And um. And Cyan, you know, being okay, an yeah, instance yeah. to the enemy team. So that makes sense then why you have the mindset you do and, and if you do want to play jace you're going to need to shift the mindset into a much more selfish mindset of just focusing on gold yourself like even you said you didn't want to disturb the gold income of your tristana frankly don't worry about your teammates like obviously you know that's a bit of an exaggeration there are times where it is important to be aware of what your teammates need and not to like screw them over but Generally speaking, it's way more important to get gold on yourself, especially as Jace. Like, Jace's entire purpose as a champion is to deal damage. He does, he has no utility, he has no nothing, basically. His only purpose is to deal damage, and the only way that you can deal damage is by getting as much gold as possible. And so again here, once again, your bot lane's in dual lane, you need to be going top side here. You need to be covering a side lane. When you're just permanently going down mid lane the whole time when your team's here, we're just losing out on a lot of gold. And we do end up sieging a turret. But one, this is really risky for the fact that the objective is spawning and we can't be making really risky plays that might lead to our death right before the objective because now your team probably loses this. So we need to be more aware of the objective timer in terms of when we decide to go more aggressive and stuff and trade for turrets. And then we also need to play more for the side lane when we're in this part of the game. Right. Uh, I thought uh, at this point I was brain rotting because I, I haven't, you know, had this poor of a performance in a long time. Yeah. Um... So I I think I think we had like uh, a dragon to the enemy side. So I just thought like we have a, another dragon to fight. So I should get the the turret at uh, at the mid the mid lane. Yeah, I, I know I know that's faulty reasoning, but that's that was my train of yeah, thought. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean I get it. Like it's definitely you thought you could get the turret, and you probably thought your tank chase you can probably get out anyway. I get that. It's just in the future we're gonna yeah need to be like we 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 kind of explain the, the thought process that we need to have. So, because mm -hmm. yeah, again, I, uh, it is I just mainly you... the gold thing at the moment. Like getting more gold on ourselves is gonna be the main thing. But our our team is doing well here, and so should be fine anyway. Right. Uh, so one of the things that I struggled with that I that I uh, told you is like build pathing. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what to build. I usually build my core items and then uh, defensive item. Okay, so also, um, but... I just sorry, I really want to quickly mention this is a great time to die for a turret. Like, you should leave now, but you were like really risky and you were like, it's okay if I die. This is when you should die because your team is pushing the opposite side. There's no dragon up, but... right? Like, this is when we can do what you're doing here. Like, this death is fine, for example. But I'm um, sorry, go back to your build question. I just wanted to point that out. Oh, no, it's good. Please, please interrupt me whenever you, you feel it's appropriate. Uh, yeah, that, that that thing that you mentioned was my train of thought in that moment. You know, I, yeah, yeah. my team is getting top lane, so I, I should keep pushing exactly. the, the objectives. I can get the turret. If I die, it's okay. I will relieve pressure from my, my yeah. team. Especially when you're behind, too, because you're not really the carry of this game. So it's a great like thing to think about at that point. So, but onto the build thing... The build is like for this tank build is pretty much the same build every game. Like this, these items, right? It's I haven't actually played, it, but it's Heart Steel, Hydra, Sunderer. What are the other items that are typically built? Uh, Sunder Sky. Yeah. Uh, and also, I think the last item is Work Talent Angel. Yeah, and it could be that last item could be situational. It could be Sterix. It could be Garden Angel. It could be in specific games you might need like a Frozen Heart if they have like a vein, you know. Uh, or like stuff like yeah, that. Hyper a carry. Of, or yeah. A lot of auto attackers. Exactly. Uh, then, when is a good time to get out of heal? When to get anti heal? Yeah. Okay. I, I mean. I mean, it's just. Does it have to follow like a principle? No. I mean, so first of all, there's two. I can explain the the damage build for Jace like after. Um, 
as well because like that's the one I typically go on so I can explain or how that one works as well but for like the tank one or for any build where you're building anti-heal you're just doing it when you think the healing is going to be a problem like it, it's not a very you know complicated thought process that you go through it's like okay they have an Aatrox this Aatrox is going to be a problem later on I want to make sure I have anti-heal usually a lot of champions healing isn't that much in the early game so you don't need to rush anti-healing unless you're into like a Soraka or something early game um, you can wait until usually like your second or third item to get the component so that you don't hamper your build early on unless they have absurd amounts of healing like I said and if they just have um like in top lane it's even fine if you're just landing a guy with a little bit of healing to like they get a bramble vest instead of that guardian angel for example in this build or in the other build to get mortal reminder instead of Cyrilda's grudge just to get that little bit of anti-healing right. to make the 1v1 easier does that make sense yeah, it makes sense. I, I tend to panic a lot and, and you know, buy anti-heal and anti-shielding components and items because, yeah. like, I I see an Aatrox and immediately think that I, I need to get anti-heal. And, and I think that makes my, my item spike slower. Yeah, I mean, it depends. Like, if you do see an Aatrox, you should pretty much always have anti-heal. It's just, like, you don't need to build it, you know, instantly sometimes. Like, you can wait until, like, after your second or third item or whatever, but yeah. It's perfectly fine when you see the Aatrox or someone with a lot of healing to, to build it. Right. And at this point in the game, the only way we can throw is if we don't keep our lanes pushed and like we make ants. So now that your team has kind of like died here, instead of walking up towards mid and just like kind of going up for no reason, we just need to make sure we're keeping the lane like far enough up that they can't, you know, pressure our turrets or whatever, rather than kind of having a random death like this. Because now our deaths are or our death timer is desynced with our teammates so now if our teammates die it's really bad because they'll get like baron or something out of it so you once your teammates make that mistake and die like they did you kind of just need to be playing a lot safer until they come back right uh i agree with you that well uh i think most of the time uh, when i start learning a new champion i tend to you know forget some some of the micro game stuff yeah that, happens because like you mentioned you have to stick with if you want to climb you have to stick with a few champions that you want yeah. to master so do you have is mid or jungle the main role that you're playing like it's okay to play both but is there like one that you're queuing mainly or i think uh when well i started learning jungle about two years ago yeah. because i wanted to i i felt like that role was uh easier to carry with uh, in low elo because I I can snowball my advantage. Also, pause here. Just here. Uh, pause. Yeah. So before we talk about the game, so then, are you planning on maining jungle or, or mid? I think it would be good to choose one, and then the other one can be your secondary. If your goal, I don't know what your goal is. I, I didn't ask that yet. But if your goal is genuinely to climb as high as you can, then that should be a a choice that we make. You know. Mm, uh, you know, I haven't I haven't really thought about it yet, but I mainly go for mid in every okay. game. What are the mid champs? Uh, jungle so is my mission. The mid champs that we play. I would say again, if you don't want to do this, you don't have to. But I think it's good if we decide on three champions to play, and then we play those three champions. So we don't deviate from that. That way, we can you know get used to. Help me decide. Really. I have four in mind, but what are you, four is fine. Like if you prefer four, do four. But yeah, what are what are the champions? The better ones that I play with is Corky. Uh action, but I think I'm gonna ditch him because you know it's super hard to feel an advantage with him. Yeah, he is a really uh, good champion right now in my opinion, but yeah. I, I haven't tried him yet this patch, so that yeah. might that might change. But yeah, let's go with the action. Uh I play Shen a lot, uh when I'm playing with friends and also alone, it works great. And Cyan. Okay. So then Jace is not a part of, of that, so we don't need to focus super hard on the mechanics of Jace, you know, for this, which we spoke about some things, but we could, the macro thing is what's more important. So you're going to be playing two supportive mids and like the Scion and the, the Corky, or the Scion and the, the Shen, and then Corky, Auction are kind of those more like carry champions. So I think that's good because then you have, you know, when you see you don't have a tank or a frontline, I, I think it's good to pick, you know, the Shen or Scion if that's what you're used to, and then the tank your chance or, or the the carries rather in other scenarios when you have frontline and whatever and then obviously for jungle you can have two to three champs like i, I guess kane and then whatever other champs it is that that you're most comfortable with so i think that's fine for a champion pool for climbing is it 
team composition really that important in diamond and so low master so the re you listed four champions which is why if you're gonna plan to play four champions then you should pick within that pool so whatever pool you decide on you should pick what's best for the game so like if you're if you want to one trick one of those four champions then just pick that champ every game and that's fine that's going to be perfectly fine but if you are listing for champions then we should play those champions in the scenarios that they're best in you know what i mean yeah i get you uh i mean uh i selected these because you know the files get corrupting so i had to sign in gameplay yeah. prepared for you but that, that makes sense uh, i i think it was good that this can i uh you know, play play the game again yeah i you wanted think? to explain something with the game which is why i paused it because of the scenario that we ended up okay. in here so if you want me to do that now or if you have something else to say it's up to you but yeah yeah uh, let's go let's go okay, with that so now. you can play it now as i explain this but basically your teammates already died our goal when our teammates die especially when there's an elder up soon rather than going towards the top side where you saw everyone go towards should be to push the lanes as far as possible Again, we should have gone towards bot side. We should have protected the Baron by getting a ward on there because the enemy all went towards top side. Because then we would have been able to zone them off Baron because they they initially did not walk towards the Baron. And so you would have been able to zone them and start pushing the lane in bot side rather than letting them get it for free and kind of just going up to top side to try to like contest the enemy. Um, so basically, we just could have prevented this. And we need to think more once our teammates die. We need to look for like waves to make sure that we can prevent the enemy from gaining too much from it. And we need to make sure like we're not making throws or like fighting without our team as well. I think again, like the main thing that because even when you're playing Sion or when you're playing Shen, it's still important to pay attention to the waves and pushing them before you really rotate. Like you don't want to just give up a ton of gold just because you are a tankier champion. And your general like understanding of waves, especially Shen and Sion should shift to the mindset of a split pusher late game even if you're playing them in mid lane and then you can use your global ultimates on both of those champions to rotate and help your team when they need and so you need to have a much better understanding of like when we need to go up on side lanes like when we need to push the side lanes rather than being so concerned with going mid as much as we are and being so concerned with always like going towards fights wherever our team is at Does that kind of makes sense yeah. it absolutely does i get I get blasted by the graves. I didn't expect this him yeah. to do as much damage as he did to me. I know he's full, uh, full damage, and I, I have basically only healed and you know played a steel cap, but uh, I didn't expect him to do that much damage to me. Yeah, it was a lot. I mean, it still worked out. Your Darius got I, them. I'm also under leveled. Yeah, and again, this is the waves thing once again. Like the fact, yeah, we're not level 15. Also, how much gold do you have? I can't actually see your gold. I have. 12,000. 12,000. Okay, yes. Yeah, so this is. This needs to be. You need to be minimum like 15, 16,000 right now. And I have a feeling, again, this comes from the fact that you play Sion and Shen, so you don't get punished for it as hard the fact that you have such low gold. But even on these champions, like you need to be much, much, much more concerned with our gold, with our side laning, because the fact that we have 12,000 gold at this point in the game is, again, a major problem. So it, it's really. I, I think that's just going to be the main thing we, we focus on when we're thinking about how you can improve because you're like a relatively good player in terms of like you pick grandmaster like you know what you're doing you're not clueless on these these things um there were the lane phase things that we spoke about that i think you said you took some notes on that i still want you to keep those things in mind because they're important to note but the main thing that i just think you need to be going into the rest of your games on is thinking more about i need to get this wave push first i need to see where my you know if my team comes towards mid i need to not stick around mid with them i need to go towards other sides of the map and then the only time that you're sticking around your teammates when you're worried that they might int is, you know, when an objective's coming up 30 seconds or so. Again, which we didn't have that awareness of. <clears throat> and you kind of went by yourself and, and that a couple times when objectives were spawning. And so, so we need that awareness that the only time that we're really shifting our mindset to being more around our, like, uh, team fights and whatever, rather than getting the waves first and then going, is only really when these objectives are spawning. So, uh, like even here, I'm, I'm you should go bot or top here. Like, it just sorry, but just, you need to go bot or top here. You can't just again run through mid straight up. And then I don't even know where your teammates are flipping this. And if they are flipping this as a tank, you need to be zoning. You don't need to be on it. So you need to be looking for someone to zone. But we should again just be pressuring a wave first here. But sorry, you were saying something. Yeah. Uh, so, 
main thing that I have to focus is getting more gold with these kind of champions. Yeah. Because uh, with Shen or Cyan, I mean, with, with Cyan, I don't have a problem pushing lame uh, because it's pretty much every champion, you know, he, he has yeah. easier way here because in the beginning of the game. But even on these Scion and Shen champions, you still need to be worried about your gold way more than I'd imagine that you are based on these games. And you still need a better understanding of side laning because again, like yes, it's more important to get gold on Jace than it is to get on Scion or Shen, but that doesn't mean that we can just forego any amount of gold and just focus on, you know, only fighting because that's still going to lead to us being way weaker than we need to be and then we're not going to have the proper tank items to be later on in the game and stuff like that, so. So yeah, uh, I get completely carried this game. Yeah, we'll take it. <laughs> That's about you know, playing tanks uh, too, it's easier to get carried, so. I played horribly, so I think this was a good opportunity to, you know, learn from yeah. my mistakes. And I think this sums up every problem that I have in most games when I lose. Yeah. So yeah. So uh, you said you were taking it's... notes. Do you still want at the end, like after we go over the game game as well, to write for me to write notes out as well, or do you kind of have notes that you think are valuable? Um, I mean, uh, one thing I did not understand is you, you take notes of the of the whole thing, or yeah. So typically, you want me to to after... wait until the the full the full review is is live yeah. to. You know, Typically, after like, we review the two games, I share my screen and write out notes for the person, and then we, I just like send them to them after. So that's why I'm saying if you already wrote out notes, okay. then we don't need to do that. But if you haven't, if you don't have everything, or if you want to send me what you do have written out at the end, then we'll all know like if there's anything else to add. Basically, that's all. Yeah, man. I I I think uh, I'll stick with your notes <laughs> instead right. of mine. Well, I'll still have you share mine or share yours with me so I see what you did right so that, you know, I'm not writing the same thing, obviously, but yeah. Uh, but we can go into the can game now. Okay, let's go. Uh, so, in jungle, in the jungle, I, I play two champs and two champs only. I, I don't know. I don't know what else to play. It's mainly Kane and Aatrox. I think I played him pretty good. Uh, Kane, with blue Kane, uh, I was, you know, climbing steady. I... I I got like a whole two, you know, from Emerald Diamond into you know, Is Ghost ten really marks the move, by the way? Like, there's no way Ghost is better than Flash. Like, I don't play Kane, but there's no <laughs> way. There's no way. Yeah, I I mean, it's... I I played like this since, okay. since I started learning Kane. I mean, if that's I don't know what you where do, it... you know, I don't think it's good, but you... A couple of things already. Um, first of all, Division again, the top right. Uh, secondly, you should have recalled and grabbed Sweeper before you, like, after you ward the thing, you know, you ward the blue buff, you should recall mm -hmm. and grab Sweeper, but you should start blue side here as well. And again, uh, pause, you didn't, so go on the top right, click the okay. three bars, and then the vision again. So, you need to start blue side this game, and there are a myriad of reasons as to why. First of all, we want blue cane, right? This game? Or no? I'm assuming you want blue cane? Yes. So we should path towards the the, uh, the ranged we'll spot lane, right? Obviously. Additionally, Renekton is hard to gank. Like Yone wins, loses to Renekton pretty hard. Like Renekton is going to win this lane, unless our Yone is faker, I guess. And we don't want to path towards a losing lane most of the time, because we're just going to end up like usually dying there as well. Like obviously, every once in a while, pathing towards a losing lane means that you can save his lane, but you should not path to try to save someone. You should just do it when it's convenient for you. So we need to path towards our lane that's going to be something we're going to play around early game, which Ash Brom is a god tier lane, and they're into a late game scaling bot lane, which means one, you want to shut down the late game scaling bot lane, two, you want blue cane, three, you have the winning advantage, and four, they have an Evelyn who is a weak early game jungler, meaning that typically Evelyn's going to start red side. So if you start blue side, she starts red side, we're on the same side, which means that you're going to be on Scuttle at the same time as her, which means you can contest her with a winning bot lane because you're going to have the prior on that lane most of the time, and then you're going to put her behind. All that makes sense? It absolutely makes sense. I, I just did it in force of habit, you know? Like, yeah, yeah, red exactly. Side, that's I, why I we need to clear choose almost that habit. Everything. Yeah. But I, I promise you, I will. Yeah, no, you're will, good. And also, again, recall for practice. Sweeper, remember, after you ward... The opposite side because yeah. then that obviously gives us better vision so. 
so, so also my, my friend of is uh, I'm gonna like gag my friend, you know. It's my oh, duo, I know he can uh, he can carry. Yeah. The same yeah, thing I don't, I, I, I don't before. like I mean I like, you know, being more cognizant of like our teammate trying to play more around our, our person who we trust. But I don't like making objectively bad decisions just because it is our friend who we know is good. Because a good player can survive. Like a good player is not a good player just because they're able to win when they're ahead. They're also a good player because they know how to play from behind. And so you should have a player who you're not going to screw yourself over for. Because like, also you should go wolves here and just full clear. Rather than doing this, it's just going to waste our time and then it's going to be less efficient. Because we don't want to contest Scuttle instantly. One, again, because we assume that Evelyn's going to start red side most of the time, which means Scuttle's probably not contested. And two, we don't really need to contest early when full clearing and then getting there after is going to give us level five quicker. Then if we do it this way, it's a lot less efficient. Um, does all that make sense as well? That makes sense. Uh, it's just that... Um, yeah, yeah, I, I absolutely understand your reasoning. It's just that, um, you know, point of thought. I know it's faulty, but... It's okay to have a different thought. To... It's fine to share their thoughts with me. You don't have to agree with everything I say. Like, it's okay. I'm going to obviously tell you what I think, but it's totally fine. No, in, in, uh, in hindsight, I, I totally agree with you with both things. I, I want to go and, and get the blue form as, as soon as possible. That's, yeah, yeah. that's something I didn't I didn't try. Um, I didn't try. I'm, I'm not trying to um, excuse myself. I guess, yeah, yeah. like, there, there's you always know, reasoning explaining my, my faulty yeah. brain of thought. And we can see I, here, by the way, just like in a hindsight thing, this would have worked out so well with how deep the enemy are on bot lane. Like, if we are here, then with our yeah. opposite pathing, it would have been a really good scenario for us. Um, but that's obviously a hindsight thing. But it is also important, I still want to note, even if you did do your pathing that you did here, you should have full cleared rather than... <clears throat> and, and the gank worked out, and again, sometimes it's going to work out, sometimes it's not. But we're wasting time and gold when we do that, and now our camps are desynced. So basically, the way that jungle works, if you full clear, and then you full clear again, so you clear four, you know, four total sides of the map. You clear bot, top, bot, top, or top, bot, top, bot. Just either way, you clear four sides. You're going to get your first item basically guaranteed. And it's extremely important on a jungler, unlike on a mid laner or a solo laner, to rush first item because that's going to be your power spike now rather than getting boots. Now, I think Kane actually can kind of go pen boots sometimes. He's one of those champs who can just get pen boots early after your first full clear. But generally speaking, it's going to be more important to have that guaranteed item spike which means we need to be able to get four like uh, sides cleared. So again, you clear each side twice before the dragon spawns. But when you do it like this, it makes it so desynced. Your your small camps are going to be so desynced with your blue buff. And then this is going to mean that we're going to have to waste so much time either just ganking people because our camps aren't going to be spawned, or we're going to have to just spend so much time on one side of the map and we want to be like going back and forth a lot more and just kind of having those camps sync up synced up a lot better. So basically, we need our camps to be more synced together and we need to clear more efficiently and focus less on the ganks initially. And again, our pathing also needs to be more based around matchups rather than the same thing every game. Yes, yeah, absolutely. That's that's something that I haven't I haven't even thought before. Yeah. That's super good to know. And also I still don't no, know why no, the hell right you're now I'm I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I can still I yeah. Mean, that's up to you. So, uh, right now I'm panicking. Right now I'm panicking because yeah. my my bot's not doing good. Evelyn's like yeah, B zero. And so what do you think like, I'm gonna tell you to do in this scenario? Uh, focus on playing my jungle. Yeah. Instead again, of helping my team. So like, what did we really do in the end? We cleared a minion wave that would give us half, not even half, less than half of the gold. You got like 100 or 200 gold from that wave and denied your teammate gold because it wasn't all going to die. Like just most of it was going to die, but not the entire thing. So like your teammate would have gotten some of that gold anyway. What you really denied was Renekton getting one plate because he got a plate anyway, but he didn't get two plates, right? So you denied a single plate. How much did we lose? We didn't farm two camps that we could have farmed. That's 300 gold. So you denied a plate and got 100 gold for yourself, which is like 250 gold. Instead of getting 300 gold, which is one guaranteed... Two means that your next camps are going to be respawning quicker because you're farming them quicker. And three also doesn't deny your teammate gold because your teammate would have gotten some of the gold when he came back. 
But for all those reasons, it would have just been way more efficient to clear first. Does that kind of make sense how when we clear a camp, it's then going to respawn quicker? Because if you don't clear this camp for, say, a minute, you're not just losing out on that gold, you're also losing out on the next opportunity for gold because you could have farmed that a minute earlier again. And so it's not just the, the one camp you're losing out on, it's you're basically getting less camps than you otherwise would. And so efficiency, again, in both roles is just your issue. Like, you are just not as efficient as we need to be. We need to be, like, quicker with our plays, more decisive and efficient with our plays. Like, that, that is the issue. The issue is not really, like, mechanics. Like, you're playing the mechanic mechanically, the champ's pretty fine. Like, your understanding of the game in terms of, like, team fighting, whatever, is fine. You just need to understand objectives are the only time where we really deviate from wanting to play efficiently. And our teammates are really bad, so don't try to overly help them. And again, we are also, that we can see the problem with our pathing in terms of your form. You you don't even have form yet, which I didn't even notice. But I, And I'm not like a cane player again, but I do notice whenever I play against really good cane players that they have their form extremely quickly, so. And so that's one way where we could change our pathing slightly as well from for cane is you spend less time on the top side. Like, you still clear both sides of the map, but basically, essentially, we... After you clear a side of the map, you usually have some time to, to then look for like ganks on that side of the map before you go back to the other side after your first full clear because you're going to have some time until the next side respawns. But when we're playing where we want to really play around like the range side um, as the cane, you could basically spend like after you clear your top side, you immediately recall and then you go bot side and then you look for extra ganks. And then you clear that bot side of the map. Again, you look for extra ganks on the bot side until your top side respawns. And then you recall, you get top side, immediately go back to bot. Like, you keep doing that until you get your blue form. Does that kind of make sense? Right. So, um, yeah, that, that, that does make sense. If I was it doesn't, about to you know, ask, ask questions, it, to be clear, it's okay if it doesn't make sense right away. Sometimes I yeah, yeah, I, I wanted to, to ask a question because uh, with Kane, I struggle, you know, I struggle both mid and in general with efficiency, but... Uh, should I like seek fights uh, or to force plays in order to get my phone quicker? Yeah, so again, it is this whole thing about like you can force the fights once your camps aren't up. So that's why it's another reason that's so important to force the camps really quickly because then once you force like clear my blue set and then and, yeah. uh, you know try and, and get a play done in mid or, or top side and then accurate red side and yeah, try the only the only thing is since the top play. side is a melee champion instead of looking for a possibility on top side, we would only look for a mid side gank like after clearing our top lane or we would immediately recall after get top, getting top lane uh, like getting your blue side and then you would go bot side. So you would basically be spending just after you clear your top side, you'd always be going back to bot or to mid until you get that form. And obviously there's rare scenarios. I'm not saying never, ever, ever gank top even if you want blue form. Like sometimes you're going to see, you know, the enemy top laner is really low or the wave is really good or you need to gank to help your teammate. Like, sometimes you can deviate from that. Again, everything that I tell you is... Uh, there's always nuance to the game. And so I'm not saying that you can never, you know, differ from what I tell you. There are scenarios where you need to. But generally speaking, does that kind of make sense? Yeah. Um, there are exceptions, but I, I had to stick with, with, with one you know, yeah. play style in order to, to get more efficiency. So instead of, you know, thinking all the, the possible paths, I, yeah. I just have to stick with one... And I also I don't I like the do. mindset that you have when you're playing with this teammate of like, I need to let him carry kind of. Because what this really does is it doesn't make you any better at the game. Because you're just playing all around your teammate being good. And like, again, I don't mind, you know, being a bit more like, okay, I'm going to play a little bit more towards my teammate because he's good. But like, you're way too overforcing into the fact that you're trying to play around your friend because you know he's like, you think he's better than you. And this basically means that you're never going to be able to get better because you're never going to put yourself in positions to actually be able to carry games. You're always just going to be relying on him to carry when you play with him. So the only time you're going to be able to get better is when you're not playing with him. And like that, that there's no point to that. You could focus on getting better and he's still going to be good enough to be useful regardless. And then obviously, you know, if, it, if you want a red cane game, you know, you, you gank him a lot more, for example, or you play more around him. But you need to play more around the actual like scenarios of the game. Kind of. And here again, we just have camps up and we just like camps 
could have been cleared before the objective spawning as well because that's kind of another thing when the objective is say a minute or so away it's important to make sure you get around your power spike uh, in terms of items so say you're a thousand gold away from an item and the objective spawning in a minute 30 you need to make sure you're clearing your like all of your camps and then looking for a possible like uh side lane golds to just make sure we hit our item spike kind of or if we need a stasis before a fight or whatever your camps are up a lot of times when the objective spawning and, and they should just usually be down at that point it's not always going to work out that way sometimes it, you're just gonna it's gonna you're gonna be up and you're gonna have to go to the objective but it's important that we're focusing again it's just i'm reiterating the efficiency point because that is really the point that matters in terms of like your gameplay so yeah it like might both, feel, it both might feel games pretty have straightforward the same issue. but yeah it, it's really the issue right now so efficiency yeah, I, I was thinking about what you told me about playing around my teammates because yeah, I'm even so here, used just go to farm. them. Just, I, I'm not interrupted. I can go, go ahead now, but just go farm. Two caps. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, this is this was my worst play of the game, I think. At least we killed them, you know? Is sending a message. Yeah, could have been worse. Message. Could have been worse. Uh, so I was thinking uh, about what you said. Me playing around my teammate. I, I'm so yeah. used to them, you know, yeah. telling me that I only. Uh, I'm, I'm so used to them telling that I don't know how to play carry champions. Uh, just focus on, you know, supporting them. I think I, I translated this playthrough into all the champions that I play. Yeah. And it is the same thing as well. It even goes back to your jungle clear where you're doing the same jungle clear. It seems like you and how you play Jace too. You play everything like it's Scion or, or Shen which is exactly what you identified there. You need to be able to just alter the way that you think about different games based on the game state too. Like again, you know, based on the, how we should actually be clearing this game rather than doing the same thing every time. And so rather than just accepting what your friend tells you and that you're bad at, you know, other carries and that you shouldn't play them. Unless if you just only have fun playing, you know, Shen and Scion and keep playing that, you know. But if your goal is to get better at being able to carry games and even on Shen or Scion or whatever, being able to carry games, you need to stop putting yourself in this position where you're not letting yourself get better at the game. Because when you have the mindset that you're going to let yourself get carried, again, I already spoke about this, but like, you have the mindset that you're not going to, you're just going to let yourself get carried. You're not going to ever try to take the gold and be selfish and make the actually like objectively correct play. Right. You're never going to get right. to the point where you can hit Challenger or Sovereign because you're only going to be reliant on the, you know, unless like you start dating a, a Sovereign player and then like, you know, they, they boost you. Like, there's no way to do it unless you actually focus on being able to play in different scenarios and play different play styles rather than playing the exact same way every game, basically. I think it's it's easier for me to stick with the champs I know how to play, yeah. like, you know, um, or maybe, you know, shift my mindset, which, which I think it's a better option. For me. And that's up to you. I mean, not just that's... for climbing. Yeah. I mean, not just for climbing. I, I'm asking you to give me like an answer because I, I want you to consider it. Like, you know, coming from something that someone that knows the game and, and what do you want the answer? Like, it, you you want what question? Like about if you should play other champions or what? What do you mean? You think it's easier to change my mindset or you know or get better at the game know. or? Okay. So I think based on how you play, first of all, I want this to be very clear. You shouldn't be playing the way you're playing even on Scion or on Shen because even when you're playing these champs, you're right. playing too unselfishly. And so, yes, on those champs, you should play a little bit more for your teammates, but still not as much as you are in these games. So that's the first thing. But the second thing is you're going to hit a wall most of the time with the Shen Scion type of strategy where if you're playing it every game. So again, you already know how to play it pretty well. You're comfortable on it. And so when you see good scenarios for it, continue to pick it. But then if you really want my advice, if your goal, I don't know again what your exact goal is, if your goal is to get back to GM or up to challenger into the higher ranks, you can't just stick to this style of I'm going to just let myself get carried every game. And I'm not going to create gold for myself. So whether or not you want to stick to the same champions, you know, isn't what's actually relevant. What's relevant is that you're going to start shifting your mindset towards being able to carry games. And sometimes it's going to be easier to shift that mindset if you do start playing more Kane or start playing more Corky or Akshan. Because those are going to be your champs who can actually carry on. And if you're focusing super heavily on gold efficiency and carrying on those games, then you're going to make mistakes. You're probably going to lose more games initially. Um, I think the healthiest thing for you to do in terms of getting better at the game is to, for this entire season, do not care about your rank. 
not value the actual like you know number of climbing and that's hard to do because it's hard to not care about whether or not you win games or whether or not you climb but if you just spend you know that month focusing on efficiency on being able to actually start carrying games on understanding this type of play style it's going to be way better in the long run for you actually being able to get up to grandmaster sovereign challenger whatever whereas if you keep playing the way you're going to you're playing you you know you'll still be master you'll still maybe hit grandmaster if you keep doing with a good player but you're never really going to break past that point i'm super happy with the things you're saying right now because i think you pinpointed the exact thing that i'm struggling with yeah i'm glad that's um, hopefully what, what we can do here so so um also no problem reason I self coaching not not just because uh, I wanted to climb you know that's like a side effect of getting yeah. better at the game uh, but yeah I I've noticed like lately I'm not like really good at the game anymore that's a hard yeah. thing to accept but uh, uh, I think it's it's a good starting point to get better yeah for sure and, and that's the thing too just taking more risky plays and then once you take the risky plays, you can assess whether or not they were good. But like, if you never make the risky plays, you can't ever learn from them. Like, it's basically just if we go into these again this next month or so, just with the mindset of I'm going to learn from my mistakes and think about what actually went into it like deeper and maybe watch back your replays once or twice a week for like a game or two even. Um, because I can like already what I foresee happening if you do go into this. Um, so again, are we sticking is mid going to be the role we're queuing or is or what are you thinking so far in terms of the role you're going to queue? Or do you not really know uh, you're going to keep both? Um, you know, I, I think I, I have to decide right now, and I think I'm going to stick with mid, mid lane. Okay, so But I then, think it, it was yeah. a good... Mm -hmm. Sorry, no, no, go, go ahead. ahead please. I'll speak after, just go ahead. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to, to, you know, show this game because I think most of the mistakes I, I make in mid lane also, you know, permeated into my jungle place. Yeah, they as, did. As you can tell. For sure. And so, again, so we're gonna, are we gonna be doing the four champions we listed or, or like for mid or is, is there any difference now? So are those the four champs that we're gonna stick to? Uh, yeah, you think it's, I think it's better to just take the, those four champs because when you know the core mechanics of each champ, you, you don't yeah. have to think about doing the combos right to a champ you didn't, you didn't know. So you can focus on, uh, 100%. The things. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to, you know, <laughs> You know, be more selfish, capitalize, be more efficient, you know, in my mind playing a lot. So. Yeah. And so then the reason I asked about the champions is because then I foresee mm -hmm. most likely the issue that occurs once you start getting better at the farming and you start getting games where you're more the carry, especially on Akshan and Corky. I'm assuming what, you know, the next thing that's going to cause you to lose a lot of games is you're going to start getting more fed. You're going to have more gold. You're going to maybe be even, maybe be ahead, whatever. Um, well, two mistakes. One, I think the lane phase is gonna be something we're gonna have to work on you know more through i do have some videos on lane phase watching just other youtube videos on lane phase or just working on your lane phasing or laning phase but after that is gonna be once you're fed how to play as like a carry in team fights because it's different than playing these tankier champions because you have to be a lot more worried about your actual like health bar like you're a squishy champion you have to be aware of the enemy abilities and so I'm pretty sure what's going to happen is you're not going to be tracking enemy abilities properly and then you're going to go in too quickly because that's even what happens in a lot of these games. You're not always cognizant of what can and can't kill you. So when you're going into team fights, especially when you're fed, you need to be thinking to yourself before the fight starts, say 30 seconds to a minute before the objective, for example, maybe two minutes even, at some point just be like, okay, what champions in this team can actually kill me? So for example, say that you were a carry in this game. Evelyn can kill you. Oriana, like, Dockwave can possibly kill you. Um, those are like the two real worries that we have on the enemy. I can't see the last champion, so I don't remember what the last champion is at the bottom. But overall, like those are the Renekton. worries. What's up? Renekton. Renekton. Okay, so Renekton dashing and unstunning us. So those are the three things. And so if we think about this, okay, Renekton dashing and unstunning us, how can we avoid that as a carry? You assess, right? Okay, how can we avoid Oriana? Well, we're just going to have to know Oriana's positioning and wait for that shockwave to come out or whatever. That's not really one we can avoid with anything specific. Maybe we'll have to flash it. So maybe my flash is going to be used for that. My QSS is going to be used for Renekton. And then, okay, Evelyn. Well, okay, Evelyn coming in on us. That's where I need to either exhaust her or I'm going to need to flash that because it, she's, you know, more of the worry. But also, you're going to need to make sure you take control wards so that you position around a way where that control word's going to get value of you and then you're kind of waiting until you really see Evelyn's show before going in. So basically, 
you need to find the enemy spells that are most dangerous to you and then you need to identify what spells and counters you can use how you need to react to that and then having this idea of how the fight's going to go out allows you to not just go in blindly or just go in whenever you kind of see an opportunity you're actually knowing okay evelyn just went in and ulted that's my time to go in oriana just use all of her abilities i can go in now like instead of just you know going in for fun basically whenever we see an opportunity that's usually the mistake that i see with people once they are good at getting leads and not good at like maintaining in the leads whereas you seem like a player yeah. who's better at playing from behind kind of when you're on that tankier champion and stuff like that so yeah well you know i i did like a caveman version of, of that train of thought that you just had uh yeah. you know i my main worry is isn't red item because it's not going to try and kill me most of the time yeah. Uh, I'm like worried about the Lulu polymorphing me or the Orianna Shockwave, so I built the, uh, you know, uh, I don't know how you call that. In English, Edge of Night? You know, the night, Edge of Night, right? Yeah. And I also have the Maw Mortis because I don't want to get ass blasted by the Evelyn, which is... Yeah, your itemization right in this game is for sure good with the Maw, yeah, and the Edge of Night. Those are good items. And yeah, that's another thing. The itemization is another way to avoid these different things, so for sure. But uh, most of the time, I struggle with itemization. With Kane, isn't it's not that difficult, but with Chen, you know. It, uh, well, the tank builds actually aren't that difficult destroyed. either, to be honest. I mean, what the core items are: Heart Steel, Titanic, and then after that, you're just going either anti heal, or you're going uh, anti attack speed, or you're just going right. with action. With action and Corky, I really struggle because I, I don't know where to build Man Immune or where to build my Train to Force first. Okay, um, then we can go no. through the itemization of them. And these are champs where I'm going to show you how I figure out itemization, because, I mean, I used to be, like, rank 6 Corky a long time ago, but I haven't played Corky in a long time, and I never play Oxshawn, so, like, these itemization, I'm not, I don't know exactly how to build them off the top of my head, but I'll go through with you how I typically decide to, like, figure out how I should build champs, and then we'll speak about those things. For yeah, man, we'll, we'll have another session, we'll, we'll have another session, you know, as soon as October starts. I'm going on vacation this Friday, so... Sounds good. I want to master as much experience that I want. Also, I, I would really like for you to, you know, um, talk, you know, how you how you coach a pattern you play from LAS and, you know, your ideology is clashing. I, I think he's going to be a little more argumentative than, than me, of course, because I don't know, like, the basis of the game. Yeah. But uh, you, you mind if I want to give this to him. You know, your. I want to give him your coaching session. Yeah, so, if you're gonna pay uh, for it, he doesn't it, speak English. Do that, yeah. yeah, of course, man. That, but would you yeah. mind if I? You know, you, you will need a live translator to speak with him. Do you mind if I? Oh, you, you want to translate mid, like, like during the session? Yeah, it's like it's going to be me, you, and uh, I mean you, him, and me. That's oh. fine, but I assume because of the translation that it will. Like, we'll probably only have time for one game, you know, within like an hour. Like, it'd probably be hard to go through two games because it'll probably take longer to translate. So if you're fine with that, yeah, man. That's, then that's fine. Yeah. I'm, I'm completely fine with that. Okay. Don't worry. So, yeah. uh, we're, I think we're almost at the, at the hour. Uh, yeah. so... Do you want to write out some notes or what do you... Yeah, I, I, I think I'll send you my notes, uh, later. Okay. Uh, I, I think... Uh, do you think looking at my statistics are is important? You know the main champions I play and the win rates and whatnot. Yeah, like if you want to go do that real quick, you can go look at your. Or is it that not important? You know, for understanding which champs you win the most on is extremely important. Like that's how you decide on. Who... Like when I was the first time I was climbing on jungle, I played like five junglers at the start because I was learning the role. So I, you know, I played some, and then like. I looked at my win rates, my Zinja win rate, like 52%, whatever, something like that. My Vi win rate, 45%. My Lee Sin win rate, 45%. My win rate on like a ton of other champs, 40%. My Camille win rate, 65%. Obviously, I'm going to play Camille. And then I one trick Camille and I got Challenger in less than a month playing only solo queue because I only played Camille. Like, you know, what you win on is what you should play. Regardless of what anyone tells you, if you win on it more than you win on other things, just play that, you know? You can click on the top right so, if you click on the little leaderboard looking thing it's easier to find it all this is this one yeah and the t14 yeah this will show you so you played jacks huh 
Yeah, I started playing Jax, but I struggled a lot with uh, laning phase with him because I I built full AP Jax. Uh, that makes sense. Then why you yeah, have but, almost six deaths but, average? Yeah, but but I I do not play like the the Rift guides, you know, tanky AP Jax. I play like full. Yeah, yeah. Full AP Jax. Is that something so you're yeah, going to keep it's... playing a lot of, or are you focusing now on the mid lane? I think I'm. I think I I'm going to keep playing like uh, champs that we discussed but because uh, Jax is a champion that I was starting to learn like Jace, but yeah. I kind of like ditch him. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, uh, so yeah. Because I, I I wasn't having a lot of fun with him. So then we can look at the stats on the champs that we just. So your Akshan, you know, these are pretty good stats, but again, the gold per minute is too low for a snowball and carry champ when you're averaging ten kills. Like this means you're averaging ten kills. And your gold per minute is 784. And so let's say the average game is what? They just say it's 18 minutes. 10 kills, that's 3,000 gold. Maybe a little less because sometimes people are worth less gold, but also shut down. So we'll just say 3,000 gold. So you're gaining 3,000 gold from kills here. And say the average game time is eight, 18 minutes. That means you should have 18,000 gold if we're getting like God, you know, 1,000 gold per minute. Realistically, more like 16, 17,000 gold per game. Which means that you should be getting roughly twelve or thirteen thousand gold per game throughout the eighteen minutes. That isn't attributed to kills, which means you need to be average again twelve or thirteen thousand. Means you need to be averaging seven hundred something gold per minute in terms of only what you get from your farm. So every time that you get two or three hundred gold from a minion wave, think about the fact that you need to get two more of those things minimum by the time that your a minute is up, basically. And obviously this changes with the, the time in the game but the reason i'm kind of doing this math on the spot here is because this is how i think about the game is in terms of the math of it i don't think about it in terms of whether or not i'm worried about my teammate fighting or whatever and so that gold being that low when you have this many kills is a big problem so apart from that you're winning a lot on the champ and you get a lot of kills i assume you're probably decent at this champ and it's probably a good one to keep playing so it's the same mistake that i do with yeah you know jason and, and, and everyone Kane. and again even shen 620 gold per minute is absurd that's support like unless you're playing him support if you're playing him mid and you have 620 gold that's like i would report someone like it's and then you're winning on <laughs> yeah. it like yeah. you're winning on it so it's not even like if you just shift this right you're gonna be winning even more like yeah i saw i struggle a lot of you know farming with chin yeah you know every time for that matter so that's that's like i think that that's one of the main points that i have to address yeah, yeah. right now right me better and that's why i think i think a lot of the points that you, you kind of understood i don't even know if writing notes is super necessary for this one because like we said we kind of we kind of understand what we need to do and what champs we're going to start focusing on and how we're going to focus on shifting the way we play and the focus is going to just be improving and then i think like you know the rest should kind of solve itself from there so excellent yeah i i stopped taking notes in the second game because uh, thing, i wanted yeah. to take yeah i, I wanted to to take as as much information then you know have time to process it yeah, uh, yeah. i didn't have had to take notes oh, but sure. yeah that's the main thing well talon i think um uh i don't know if, if you want to address any specific thing else no, it, unless you have any other questions so that's it. it so if you if you could you know pinpoint like uh, five main things that you want to tell me to help me get better at the game uh, even even if we already discussed them, uh, I just want them engraved in my brain so it's easier. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna write out the main points again. We won't write as like usually I write you know, when I'm coaching other people. I write like all these things, right? I write more generally, but we'll probably just write like five things to keep it more brief because it's relatively straightforward and we kind of spoke a lot on it already. So efficiency, again, that's that encompasses pretty much everything that we spoke about. That's the first main thing that I would focus on in terms of you getting better at the game. The second thing is just playing to improve. Like you're playing to get carried and you're playing to you're playing the same way every time. You're just you're just trying to to get carried to make sure your team you're always worried about your teammates. Um, which kind of plays in the next thing, which is play more selfish. And these things obviously all tie into each other, but to be much more selfish when you play the game, uh, you need to be much more focused on Kind of how, how I don't know exactly how I'm trying. You just you need a bigger ego. Like at the end of the day, it's like it's like weird to say because usually 
I'm not telling someone to have more of an ego, but like you just need to be more concerned with yourself and not kind of thinking so bad about your own skill and everything. You need to be more confident when you're making plays and actually go into every game looking to be the reason your team wins rather than be the reason your team didn't lose, which is kind of what happens right now. Um, yeah, I think when I when I get to Grandmaster the first time, I met so much people that I felt were much better than me at game. Yeah. So I I kind of like to get back to it, but that's bad. I. So if you I, want me to share to a little bit about, about myself, like in terms of like I'm generally not very good at things like initially, like I'm not like uh, naturally good at stuff. This game I was stuck in Grandmaster for like a year and a half, two years. Um, when I would go into games, like initially I was a support main and I would play this way to like, I would play to just try to help my team. And every game I play pretty much, I'm always trying to be the reason my team doesn't lose and like play a supportive style and play around my teammates. And I then like decided to become a streamer. It was like a, like a little over two years ago. And when I was doing that, my goal obviously was to like get to the top. And so initially I was a hard stuck grandmaster player who I would play this really passive safe way. I would play, I was a various one trick. And I would pretty much just play super safe. And it would lead me to win the games that I should win, and I would lose the games that I should lose, because, you know, based on whatever teammates I get. But I was never having the impact on the game. And eventually I shifted into thinking I need to look at every small detail of the game and actually improve at all of those. And so every time I would make a mistake, you know, I'd actually think about what can I do differently in this scenario? I would start learning from every scenario that like and go into it in kind of, again, the way that I'm telling you to play now. And it took me still probably six months to nine months to actually get the challenger from grandmaster and it took me you know even longer to then get to where i am now where i like hit rank five and everything but it's just it's a gradual process like you can't rush it but you're never going to get better basically if you keep having the mindset that i did because again it took it was over a year that i, I got grandmaster like the second season i played and then i was just stuck there for an entire year right until i shifted the way that i would play and even if it took a long time you eventually kind of get to that point where you're able to climb and, and you might not see the results right away, but in the long run, it's just going to be a lot better. And it's also more fun, frankly, to carry games than it is to, you know, just be playing to not lose. Yeah, uh, I think it, even if I get 1% better each game I play. Well, that's the way to think about it is to get 1% better, to get better at one individual thing, like for a game. That's why I generally, when I write these notes out for people as well, I tell them to focus on one or two of these things, maybe three of them max in a game. I don't tell them to focus on all of these, right? Like if they focus on every single th thing that I'm telling them, they're going to get overwhelmed. It's not possible. But if you build one of these things at a time as a habit, and again, I'm writing out more brief things for you because we spoke more extensively on the actual things. So like I'll also post this video on YouTube in like a couple of days probably. And then you'll be able to go back and watch if you have anything specific that you want to like look at. But if you have a couple of those things in your mind at a time, again, efficiency should just be the first thing in your mind initially. Um, as long as you do well in that aspect of your game, you don't have to worry about the rest. And then once you actually have improved that, you know, to a sufficient degree, then you can start moving on to the next thing and so on and so forth. And then eventually, a couple months down the line, all of a sudden you're way better at the game, even if it wasn't, you know, an instant improvement, right? Okay, so there's, like, I'm trying to say, there was one other thing I was going to mention for, like, what I want to write down. It was, uh, we need to be more adaptable, right? That's the thing. So, like, again, the pathing thing, for example, adaptive, adaptable, I can't spell, so I'm just going to leave it. I think that makes sense anyway. Um, the pathing thing, we had, like, four different reasons why you should be pathing bot, you know, and there were zero reasons why you should path top, and the only one was that it was your friend, right? And so, like, even games like that, where we need to understand the actual purpose of the individual game, the actual way that the game is going to be won. So that's kind of what I'll write as well. Think about the win condition of the game, rather than thinking about, I'm going to play the same way every time. So you need to be more adaptive, play differently, think about the way the game is actually supposed to be won. Even it goes into the later parts of your game where two of your teammates die, and instead of warding the Baron and then going and pushing a lane so that the enemy are worried instead of going for the Baron, you're just, like, walking towards, you know... Uh, like basically staying back doing nothing even if you die there it doesn't matter because it's more important about denying the baron in that scenario for example because that's actually what's going to cause you to lose the game when you're up so much not you know you dying once like that's not going to matter kind of that type of thing does that all make sense 